Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I've got a night shot I was going to edit and then before I started editing I thought, you know, this might actually be a good example video of kind of an unscripted edit. I've done that a few times before and folks seem to kind of enjoy it because I kind of walk through my thought process and what I'm doing and I do it live and see if it works. Um, and generally, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I can figure it out. But um, in this case, I've got a photo. Here it is. It's unedited. It's a night shot. And this is something I find that I like to shoot a lot. It's got neon. It's kind of got some signs. It's at night. And I just love that interplay of like bright neon lights and, uh, and dark uh, evening kind of, you know, background, if you will. But the photo is really dark. So uh, I'm going to go in. And the first thing I'm going to do is do Composition AI. And I want to go to a 16 by 9. Uh, and that's because there's a lot of dead space. And so what I want to do is line this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go, I think, about like that. And so let me uh, let me do that. And then I also need to work on the verticals. Let me click on that. And as you can see, I mean, that's done a, a great job, honestly. Sometimes I'll come in and play with this vertical and tilt it back just a tiny bit because I feel like it really comes up. And then I might adjust the comp a little bit more. So I think that's it right there. I'm going to go ahead uh, hit enter and now I'm ready to edit the photo. So the first thing a photo like this requires for me is brightening. It's just too dark, but it is a raw file. You're able to recover that kind of stuff. And I'll often start with Accent AI just because it does such a good job. Now keep in mind, and I've said this in other videos, um, Accent AI does more than just really brighten a photo. But for me, it's given me a little bit better visibility. So I'm going to do something about like that there's the before and there's the after and then I'll come into light and that's something I've talked about in other videos where if I have a really dark scene instead of going into the light tool which is normally what I do first I'll start with Accent AI to give it a little bit of brightening a little bit of pop and then come in here so now I'm going to try the exposure just a little bit and what I want to watch is these highlights and that sign and so I think I'm in negative 100 already, wow. But that gives me good visibility into that neon and I don't wanna lose that. Sadly, uh, these this V and the I here in the word service uh, were not lit. So I don't know what, uh, I guess they were broken at the time, but I'm gonna lift shadows a little bit. Um, and I think I'm getting pretty good visibility into the photo. I'm actually gonna cool it off. Um, I like my night shots to be a little bit cooler for whatever reason, and just in my head. Um, an evening shot should be cool. And I do that all the time, especially with city shots, because there are so many times that the lights in a city really get kind of a yellow, kind of warmer glow to the overall scene. And it's not so bad in this one, because this part, this is in Austin, by the way, this is not really like in the city. It's kind of um, kind of in a suburb area or whatever. But anyway, um, there's not a lot of ex external street lights. There's not any big buildings nearby. So I'm in pretty good shape there. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some structure AI because I do wanna bring up some of the kind of crunch. See what it's doing. You can see the noise in the sky now, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of masking here. So I've got the paint mask in place. I just wanna come in here and paint this structure addition into just some key areas here in the center of the photo. So something that, you know, just kind of keeping the, uh, the viewer's attention on the stuff that needs to be crunchy, which is like the building, the sidewalk, uh, part of the sign, that sort of thing. So something about like that ought to do it for me. And as you can see, that has helped. Now you can no longer see all the noise up in the sky because this was a handheld shot uh, in lower light, so I bumped up the ISO. Um, let me see, let me turn this off. There it is before and there it is after. And if you notice when you use Structure AI, it also, in addition to giving you a little bit of crunch, it's also giving you a little bit of lift and exposure, it seems. There it is one more time before and after. So that helps a little bit. And in fact, I think what I'm gonna do is copy this mask and I might go over to Details and paste that mask. Let me just go ahead and just drag small, medium details up a little bit. Come in here, paste the mask, and it's giving me a little bit more crunch in that scene, which I kind of like. So if you ever want to see the mask, if you hit the forward slash key, at least on a Mac, I'm not sure on Windows, you can see where the mask is being applied. Hit it again to hide that. I think that looks pretty good. I actually might pull that back just a little bit. I don't want to overdo the crunch because the other thing about night scenes to me is that I still like to have a little bit of shadow. I don't want to overdo the detail in a night shot because to me it looks unnatural. So if you have something like where the detail is really like that, like you can, I don't know, I feel like for some reason you can get away with that in a daytime shot because there's more light, you would see more detail, but in the night shot, 
I expect things to be a little, uh, you know, harder to ascertain, right? Because it is darker. So I wanted a little bit of detail, but I don't want too much. So um, I just try to keep that in mind. Just a little bit there to give it a tiny bit more kick. Okay, the other thing is there's a lot of nice warm tones. So I'm gonna go over here to the golden hour filter and take a look at that and it might pop that a little bit. I just wanna be careful, like you don't wanna go too high because then all the reds and oranges really just take off. Um, I just wanna give them a little bit. So like maybe a 20, let me see that before and after. There it is before and there it is after. It's just a tiny little pop of color or you know warmth, if you will. And then I'll often come back here to the light and I might cool off the overall photo a little bit more. That actually looks kind of cool. Um, no pun intended, uh, making that a little bit cooler. I kind of like that. And that's another thing I think about is the interplay between the warm and the cool tones, therefore the warm and the cool colors, just to see kind of how they're uh, working together or sometimes perhaps not working together. But I think that looks pretty good. Now I may come down here to super contrast and just kind of see if any of this is gonna help. Um, and I often don't know until I try it. So I'm gonna just drag these sliders for all three of these contrast sections um, to the right, and then maybe come in here and mess around with the highlights balance. Yeah, so you can see, like if you go to the left, your, your highlights are really getting out of control, but if you go to the right, they're, they're maintaining it pretty well. Let me try the midtones balance. Uh, that's, I think, to the left a little bit, gives me a little bit more kick, uh, you know, a little bit more brightness. And then to the right on shadows, versus to the left. I definitely don't want to go to the left. I think to the right just a little bit. Now let me turn this off and see how that looks. There it is before and there it is after. I think that works for me. So I'm pretty cool with that. And there's not really a whole lot more I do to this photo. I do think I'll wrap it up with a vignette. I don't feel like I need to choose subject. It's pretty much straight down the middle for me in terms of this photo. I think I would just experiment with the size and the amount. So I'm gonna probably go a little bit more to the left on the amount and perhaps on the size, and of course, inner light is uh, just a fantastic addition. I think I'll add a little bit. I just want to be careful because if you go too much, you're getting those highlights are starting to come back. So I think that's um, a, a light version of inner light, if you will. Um, kind of makes sense here. Let me turn off the vignette. You can see there it is before. You got a lot more visibility around the edges, and including into the night sky, which has nothing in it. So, like, I don't care. I don't want anyone to be distracted. And keep in mind, the brighter stuff draws the attention of the eye. So, that's a little too bright for me. So, I think the vignette helps, and it really focuses the attention there in the center of the photo. And I think that's it. Let's just take a look at what we started with. Um, there it is before, and there it is now. I feel like we've really come a long way. And if I do these sliding. Uh, window thing here. You can see the Composition AI I think helped a lot anytime you shoot it. And this is, I can't remember, this might be a 20 millimeter. I've got a 20 millimeter prime I shoot with a lot at night because I just love it. But being a fairly wide angle and I was standing somewhat close, those things like that, they tend to look like they're leaning back, you know, buildings do. So the Composition AI and the automatic uh, vertical correction was a bit of a lifesaver here. So I think that made a big difference. And then all the other tools to manage the brightness and the color and things like that. Notice I didn't really do a whole lot of color work. I didn't use color at all. I did a little bit of um, the golden hour filter and then a little bit of light really, which was just color. But you know, Accent AI helps a little bit. The contrast helps a little bit, which was down here, mostly super contrast, but there's already plenty of color. And so I often don't feel like I need to do much to really bring colors up because they're already there. But adjusting contrast and brightening some areas and darkening others really plays off that color contrast and helps bring them to life. So that's an unscripted edit. I like what I got. I mean, I think that looks pretty good. One more time, there it is before. Really dark, but you know, I was able to preserve the highlights. You know, they weren't that bad uh, in the base photo, and I was able to bring them back. I think reasonably nicely with the uh, with the adjustments I made. So there's an unscripted edit for like a night shot. I shoot a lot of these. If you guys want to see some unscripted edits on other things, I'd be happy to do that. Like maybe with a portrait. That sounds kind of fun, even though I don't do a lot of that. And um, of course, the landscape, things like that. So if these are of interest to you, let me know down below. Otherwise. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I'll see you real soon. Take care of yourselves and adios.